Welcome to Oliver Bible Church Service at Inspiration Center. I'm especially welcoming our online viewers. Thank you for joining us today, and I believe that you will indeed be blessed in this service. Remember that we'll be expecting to hear from you, so ask your questions, share your testimonies, or anything, information you seek regarding the church using our social media platforms, and we'll get back to you shortly. I'll be back after the service to give you more information. Right now, let's stand to take the opening prayers. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for a beautiful day like this. Thank you, Father, for all of us gathered here. Thank you for making this gathering possible. Thank you for you are here in our midst of so your word says. My God and my Lord, we've come with expectations and we know that our expectation will not be cut short. In Jesus' name, we roll over this service. Holy Spirit, breathe upon it. Have your way. Let the name of the Father be glorified now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're just going to sing of the goodness of God and worship His holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh. Worship His holy name. Sing like never, sing like never before. Oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.
and thank you again. You are wonderful. You are glorious. You are wonderful. You are glorious. None compares to you. Among the gods, there is no one like you. You are glorious in holiness. You are fearful in praises. You excel in doing wonders. Holy is your name. Holy is your name. Wonderful is your name. Precious is your name. Your name is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Let's call on the name of Jesus. Let's call on that name now. Jesus. Let's call on that name seven times. One, two, go. Jesus. Call on that name. Call on his name. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus. We worship you. We bow at your name. In Jesus' name, Father, glorify your name in this service today. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk about the baptism with the Holy Spirit this morning. It's one of the things I was to touch in the other covenant service before God changed the duration of that service. But let me take it as an element and expand it a little. Thank you, choir. The Lord is good. Are we set? Okay, let's grab our Bibles. Look at Acts chapter 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. We we'll read verse 8. But you shall receive... Okay, let's take it back a little. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. The promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall receive the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore we are come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? When they were, and when they therefore, verse 6 again, and when they therefore we are come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, without at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel. And he said unto them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. But you, you, shall, receive the, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and then you shall be witnesses unto me. You can launch out. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19. We read the first six verses. Acts 19. And it came to pass... That while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? There is obviously something he noticed why he asked them that question. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. We've never heard that there is anything like the Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what were you baptized? Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. And he said unto them, Okay. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, 
saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. When they had this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. Obviously, he preached the salvation message to them. Where they stopped was with John the Baptist. So he explained to them the person John was pointing people to. So, verse 6, when they had this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That, that first baptism is with water, obviously. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. That's the Holy Ghost baptism. And all the men were about 12. About 12 in number. Okay, let me just add another scripture. Look at Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 29 and to 31. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. When the intensity of the attack increased on the church. Now, listen to me. When the intensity of the church increased on the intensity of the attack increased on the church. What the church did was to raise their prayer level and ask for more power of the Holy Spirit. Are you here? Are you here? Now, these were the people, people that have been filled with the Holy Spirit before with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But we see them asking for a fresh feeling of the Holy Spirit. They were praying in unison. They raised up prayers in the face of threats. Many Christians are distracted easily in our time. Politics has sucked life out of many Christians. Even support for uh, agitations in the heart against what's happening in the land. A wrong line, you see, it's very easy for the heart to shift from focus. Even the mind, very easy. Biafra can take you out of faith. So can Odudua. And then you begin to support things you've no business supporting. If men with charms deliver you, who takes the glory at the end of the day? The church should rise up in prayers. That's where our power is. If men with charms deliver you, who takes the glory? Remember, God can, the word of God cannot be broken. He said, my glory I will never give to another. No, my prayers to graven images. Never. So let's be careful how we shift. When the intensity of attack, whenever, read the Acts of the Apostles, whenever the attack increases on the church, they raise their prayer level and go for a fresh feeling of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that counters the power of the enemy. Are you here? You can't do it with charms. We must raise our prayer level, not wishy-washy prayers. Praying to fulfill our righteousness. No. We must pray as a church. We must pray in groups. And we must begin to travel as individuals. Raise the water level of the spirit. So they came under intense attack and the church went into prayers. You can read all that from verse 23, but we are in verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness, they ask for boldness, by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were, where they were assembled together. And they were all filled. Actually, it should be refilled. They were refilled because they had been filled with the Holy Spirit prior to now. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke the word of God with boldness. They asked for boldness. They got the feeling of the Holy Spirit. They spoke the word with boldness. 
And so we are talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And Father, I turn myself loose into your hands. Speak through me and bless through me this day. Open our hearts to receive with meekness the engrafted word that can save our souls. Open our ears to hear and our minds to understand. Anoint every heart, every ear, and every mind this day to magnet your word and let your word bear fruit. Confirm it with signs and wonders, with the filling with the Holy Spirit now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the Holy Spirit is a divine person. He's a person just like you're a person. He's not an idea. He's not a principle. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's a divine person. So, we, he's not a human being. A, a human being is a person. He has personality. A personality thinks, speaks, expresses emotions, and takes decisions. The Holy Spirit takes decisions. Are you here? Are you here? Is there anyone in this house? He, he decides things. You can try to move and he tells you don't move. Paul tried it in Acts of the Apostles chapter 16. They wanted to go into Asia. The Holy Spirit told them don't, don't go. They wanted to go into India. They moved to go into India. The Holy Spirit told them don't go. And then they stayed back. And then Paul had a dream. And in that dream, a vision. He saw a man of Macedonia saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And so he, when he woke up, he knew that God was telling them to go into Macedonia. And that, those churches, they established around Macedonia amongst the churches that really supported Paul in his work. You know, so the Holy Spirit, as a personality, takes decisions. He has emotions. You can grieve him. You can grieve him. He's a person. You can grieve him. That means you can hurt him. And we hurt him a lot of times. And we don't care at times. You can annoy him. The Bible says we should not grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve him. Don't get him grieved. He reasons. He thinks. He's a person, a divine person. He's God. He's Jehovah. Jesus is Jehovah. God the Father is Jehovah. He has all the attributes of the Godhead. But at certain times, the Godhead moves one of his own forward. In the Old Testament, in all that work with Moses and their journeys through the wilderness, God the Father was working with them. Are you here? Now, God the Father was working with them. During the transition period when Jesus Christ was here, God the Son was the one championing the cause right here, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you here? Are you here? Okay. Now, Jesus has finished his work. Before he left here, he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. That word comfortless is, I will not leave you as orphans. An orphan is lonely, miserable, on his own. <laughs> on his own. You, you take care of yourself. He said, I won't leave you orphans. He said, I will come back to you. I will send you another comforter. Another comforter. Another one. There was a first comforter, which was Christ himself. Now he said, I'll send you another comforter. When the disciples were in need, they ran to Jesus. When they needed understanding, they asked him for explanation. Sometimes he asked, are you also without understanding? But he will explain to them. They depended on him. Now he said, I'll send you another comforter to fill that gap. But that this one is coming with an advantage. There are certain things I can't teach you now, Jesus said, because you can't bear them now. But the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. He will guide you into all truth. That word comforter means helper. It's from the Greek word paraclete or Latin paracletus. Paraclete. A paraclete, the picture you can, closest picture is you can have of a paraclete is this. Assuming you have a legal case with somebody and then a son, a senior advocate, 
that assumed to be more knowledgeable, that are respected in the, in the court. When a senior advocate is in a courtroom, no matter how cases are there that day, they will attend to his own first. Are you hearing me? Okay? Unless there is a judgment to be rendered that day, but they attend to the... When, once a son is in the office, they attend to him first. That's an advocate for you. He said, I will not leave you comfort. A paraclete is like that. He's somebody that is powerful and influential and has a lot of knowledge and people respect his view. Are you here? So he said, I will give you another comforter, another paraclete, that he may be with you forever. Are we still together? So the first thing I want us to underline in introduction is that the Holy Spirit is a person. He's a divine person. And walking in the consciousness of his person and of our relationship with him is important beyond what many of us can imagine. It's beyond what many of us can imagine. If God permits, next Sunday we talk about the paraclete. That's the direction, the flow is. Now, we talk about the paraclete himself. So that we understand his role in our lives and in the body of Christ. There are specific things he does. We talk about them on next Sunday. God willing. We need to walk in that consciousness of the Holy Spirit. So that we are not taking an unawares in many issues. He guides, he leads. There are many things the paraclete does. So Jesus told them in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, but you shall receive power, dunamis. You need power. Everybody on earth, every man or woman on earth needs power to operate. So when people don't have access to the power of the Holy Spirit, sometimes they go for the power of the devil. Are you, aware? Are you not aware of that? Are you aware of that? How many of us are aware of that? Okay. So they go for the power of the devil because they are conscious they need power. Your work, not mine. Uh -huh. So when people don't have access to the power of the Holy Spirit because they are not yet ready to receive Christ, they are not ready to be born again, they are not ready to change, they go for the power of the devil who will allow them to live like devils and still have some power. Are you here? Is that what happens in society? Eh? That's what happens. But everybody somehow is conscious of the fact I shouldn't be powerless. And so no Christian should be powerless. In Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, you know, the, what happened? The Jews, some Jews came back to rebuild Jerusalem. There was much to do. The temple to rebuild, there were civil works and all those things. Roads to be constructed and infrastructure and all those things. And um, they started the work with zeal. But then due to human resistance, opposition, the work was stalled. And for 16 years, they didn't build. And it took the prophecy of Haggai and Zachariah to restart those works. So while Haggai was prophesying about the rebuilding of the temple, Zechariah was prophesying concerning the rebuilding of the, the civil works. Joshua was the governor. Zerubbabel was in, uh, involved in the rebuilding of the temple. And then God showed him a vision and asked him, do you know what this means? He said, I don't know. And the angel that he saw in the vision explained to him, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel who was rebuilding. He says, not by might, the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. In your life, in your ministry, in your business as a Christian, in your family, some of us are hurting God real good in our families because you're not ready to yield to the Holy Spirit. You want to do it your way. Um... That 
You can go that way for some distance, but there will come a day God will stop you. I'm telling you, unless he's not interested in you. Uh, there will come a day he will stop you. And I hope that their crisis won't be too much for you to bear. But you're going to meet him in a very tight road one day. Where there will be no escaping like Balaam. No matter what you're building, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit. If it's by the Holy Spirit, we should learn to yield, submit to him continuously. We should learn to cooperate with him. We should learn to depend on him. Are you hearing me? You can't handle it on your own. It was God directing them to build, but he's making it clear to Zerubbabel, you can't accomplish this in your own power, by your own effort, by your own wits. You need the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, now this baptism, we are talking of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. It was prophesied by Joel, Prophet Joel, in Joel chapter 2. Right there in the Old Testament, pointing to the New Testament. Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. This was a prophecy about Pentecost. The day the Holy Spirit will be sent down here to take over a body of people. It shall come to pass afterward I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Then look at John chapter 7. John chapter 7, we read 37 to 39. They have just had the feast of the Passover, and they were getting to the end of the seven day celebration. And that was the last day of the feast. And people had gathered in Jerusalem from every area in Israel for the feast. Even people had come from outside Israel. There were proselytes who adopted the Jewish faith. Proselytes are Gentiles, people outside the Jewish nation that adopted the Jewish faith. People have gathered and they have celebrated this Passover for seven days. And it was just a ritual. Jesus saw that these people were going to be dismissed and were going home empty the way they came. And the Passover lamb was in their midst. They didn't even know it. They had killed their rams and whatever they were doing. That last day, the Bible says that great day, they had at the grand finale of the Passover. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, the King James says, out of his belly, his inner being, shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Whom those believing in him, get it in King James, tell King James today, I'm reading from King James. But this respect of the Holy Spirit, quit they that believe on him should receive. 
For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus had not died and all that. His sacrifice had not been carried out. So the Holy Spirit has not yet been given. But Jesus was speaking about rivers of living water that will flow from under the belly of those who believe in him. He was talking about the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Are you here? Are you here? Now we, we, that's still prophecy because it was to come. Okay? Now, look at Galatians. We looked a lot on that. We talked about that during, when we were preaching on the new covenant. Galatians 3, verses 13 and 14. The best way, the best way to live the Christian race is to submit to the Holy Spirit. I've said it earlier, I'm underlining something. To submit to the Holy Spirit, to cooperate with Him, and to depend on Him. He makes the going easier. Even when there is going to be an attack, he will show you things to come. I mean, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is powerful. And he's the one in charge in this regime. If you want favor from government in Nigeria today, there is no need going to go on. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? <laughs> Ask me, don't... You are asking who will I go to? Go to the person who is in charge of the present government, if you can reach him. Are you hearing me? The Holy Spirit is in charge of the work of God and the body of Christ on earth today. Jesus shed his spirit when he ascended. Okay, we read, Christ has redeemed us from the has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He hung on the cross, he was made a curse for us. That the blessing he not only took the curse away, but he ushered us into the blessing. That the blessing, the blessing, not blessings, that the blessing, the empowerment. The empowerment to succeed that God put on Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we may receive the promise of the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, through faith. This is the high point of the New Testament. That we may receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. We can't do without him. Now, the Holy Spirit baptism, baptism with the Holy Spirit, is an experience subsequent to your salvation. In other words, it's something that happens or should happen after you're saved. Unbelievers don't get baptized with the Holy Spirit. When I was serving in Bochi, in a technical school there, I was working with the Fellowship of Christian Students. I knew I had one year there. We even designed a, a church building and we were making bricks with mud to build it and it had started before I left. So, but we had an... Um, we had... Somebody that was a teacher in that school that was like a, a, the pastor of the Fellowship of Christian Students. He's a lecturer in ABU now. We renewed contact lately. That man is a, such a gentleman. Very nice man. So, and I was working with him. I was meeting with the Fellowship of Christian Students. 
Sometimes I will get their leaders in my room, but I, those that I saw, they were very zealous. I concentrated on two things. I knew I would live there very soon. Helping them to understand the salvation message, the gospel, and the baptism with the Holy Spirit. I knew if they got saved genuinely, not just joining a church, and got filled with the Holy Spirit, even when I left, there will be no vacuum. Do you understand it? It's, it's a great thing to be left in the hands of the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Now, the president of the Fellowship of Christian Students then was uh, one Yoruba boy from <laughs> Ondo State. <laughs> you know, he was their, their president. So when I started telling them about the Holy Spirit, he was nodding like this. It was like he was excited now and was nodding like this. So I asked him what was the issue. He said that one day he was walking through a bush track. He has been a believer. He was walking through a bush track. And suddenly he saw himself speaking in a language he didn't know. And he was scared. So he now understands it's the Holy Spirit. On his own, he received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak in tongues. But because he didn't know what was happening to him, he got scared. So but when I explained to them about the Holy Spirit and how he works with the believers, and, you know, he was now excited. He, he understood he was spirit-filled. Do you understand it? Nobody goes about or should go about powerless. The hungrier you are, the more or the easier it is for God to fill you. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I think that's Matthew 5, 7. Blessed, hunger is a good thing in any area. Any area. A businessman who is not hungry to succeed will not succeed. Are you hearing me? On when you are hungry, it is showing your behavior. A hungry man cannot account for his actions. If a, somebody comes from hungry, really hungry, I mean really hungry, and sees any food that is available at home, he will not ask who, has, who owns that food. He will eat it. And when you are really hungry, even of puff, <laughs> the smell of puff puff <laughs> changes. <laughs> How many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> when I was in Bauchi, that time I was serving in Bauchi, there was a new cop. I didn't see him, but I heard what happened. He fasted for seven days, and then he was about to break his fast, he prepared the food, then went into bath, and the goat came and ate the bath. And I, when he came out of the um, bathroom, he saw the goat walking away, he looked at the food. He cursed that goat. That goat died. Why do you load up such power and waste it? You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Fasting energizes you spiritually. Are you hearing me? When you have just fasted, it's not time to cause a, a, the wrong person or thing. That's why God, you see, God is powerful. He's powerful. Read the Psalms. But the Bible says he's mighty and merciful. Somebody say mighty. Powerful and merciful. The mercy of God is the control over his power. And to make sure he channels it to help people, it helps him to temper justice with mercy. That mercy exercises control over him. We must have control over power. That you have authority and have all the power does not mean you should dispense it anyhow. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So a hungry man can behave anyhow, but exercise control. Hunger is a great thing. When you're hungry, God feels. When you're really hungry, God will fill you up. Hallelujah. So we read in John chapter 20, and saying it's an experience subsequent to your salvation. After you're saved, that's the next thing to go for. 
baptism with the Holy Spirit. If you're here and you're not spirit filled with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you have an ample opportunity to do it today because to do get filled today. It's yours for the taking. It's not hard. It's not hard. It's yours for the taking. If you're hungry for it, if you need it, if you desire it, you will be filled in this service. In Jesus' name. But stretch your heart towards God. Say now, not tomorrow. Not now. I mean, not next week. Now. I want it now. Because that's the will of God. For you to be born again and to be spirit filled. So in, in John chapter 20 verse 22, we read John 20, 22. Jesus had, he had died and resurrected so it's the resurrected Christ that is meeting with the apostles here, the, the disciples. Pay attention here. I want you to get something clear. So he was meeting with them. You remember there was a time after Jesus rose, it was Mary Magdalene that actually saw him first. Do you remember? And when Mary Magdalene, he asked Mary, what are you looking for? She was hanging around the tomb looking for Jesus. What are you looking for? He said, it's my Lord. I don't know where they have taken his body. Say, please. She, she thought that man he was seeing was the gardener. He said, please, if you know where they led him, let me know. And Jesus called him Mary and spoke to him. And she recognized that that was Jesus at that moment. She rushed to hug him. Jesus said, no, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Because I have not yet attended, ascended to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Are you not glad that the God of Jesus is your God? His father is your father. We are no more strangers, no more aliens, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. We are members of the household, the family of God. So, now, so he said, don't touch me. For I have not yet ascended to my father and your father and to my God and your God. But in this place, when he came that day, um, there was Thomas that was always doubting. He said, touch me. Put your hand on my side. See the nail mark. He said, for a spirit is to know that it is me. For spirit does not have flesh and bones. Why is it that he didn't allow Mary Magdalene to touch him? And this time he's allowing the disciples, giving them, and obviously Mary Magdalene was there too, to touch him. The reason is this, he had just risen, and he needed to present the blood of his sacrifice before the throne of God. And he didn't need any contact with man that would pollute his sacrifice. Look at Hebrews 9, 12. Hebrews 9, verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and cows, but by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, into the holy of holies in heaven. Quick the tent, the tabernacle was a replica of a pattern of, are you here? Now, Jesus with his blood entered the real thing and presented it before the Father. And his offering was accepted. Are you here? Having obtained eternal redemption, when he offered it and it was accepted, he obtained eternal redemption for us. So when he now came down here, our redemption was sealed. The sacrifice had been accepted. He said, you can touch me. Now, but go back to verse 22 of John chapter 12. Of John chapter 20. Go back to verse 22. Are we together? Are we together? All right. Now, go back there. And when he had said this, okay, go back. Let's see what he said in verse 21. 
Then Jesus said unto them, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me even now, send I you. Now, and when he has said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive the Holy Spirit. It was at that moment that they were saved, that they received a new life. Are you here? Receive the Holy Spirit. He has, they now understand the salvation message. And then he breathed life, a new life into them. Just the same way Adam was created in Genesis 2. And God formed man out of the dust of the earth, made a statue. And God breathed into man the breath of life, ruach, in the Hebrew. And man became a living soul. Once Jesus breathed into them, the Holy Spirit entered them. And they became new creatures. That was when the church was born. Are you here? It wasn't on the day of Pentecost that the church was born. It was on the day of Pentecost that the church was launched out. That moment, about one, it's not just the apostles that were there, about 120 people. And these were the people he now said, talked to, the day he was, before his ascension. He says, stay in Jerusalem, and you shall receive the promise of the Father. He said, you shall receive the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power, rather, when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. It's those same people. Here, they were saved, but they were not baptized with the Holy Spirit. Is that clear? Now, when you read um, Romans 8, verse 9, Give me Romans 8 verse 9. Okay. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. So when he brings the, into them, the spirit of God enters them. The indwelling spirit of God gives us a new character. A character of holiness. Impass the nature of God into us. Impass the new life into us. Makes us new creatures. He says, if so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you, in you. He said, now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's, not, he's none of his. He's not yet a part of the body of Christ. He's not saved. Are you here? So he breathed into them and they got saved. Then he told them to still wait that you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon. This is the Holy Spirit inside them now. Now he said the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And then you will be empowered to do the work. To live effectively. Nobody can be saved without the agency of the word of God and the Holy Spirit working together. You hear the gospel and you're saved. So that's the new birth. You remember that woman at the well of Samaria? Look at John chapter 4 from verse 10. John chapter 4 verse, from verse 10. Quickly. Jesus answered and said unto her, that woman of, of Samaria, that well. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said unto thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living waters. Living waters. Living waters. Such as Jesus breathed into those disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Are you here? Living waters. Not rivers. Living waters. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence hast thou that living water? Are thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? You know, now this, the, this was a Samaritan. The Samaritans were half Jews. Are you hearing me? They were half Jews. They are Jews that mingled with Gentiles and had children. So when Nehemiah came back after that, they separated them and discriminated against them. So they looked down on Samaritans. Now, this was a woman of Samaria, a half Jew. And he said, that greater than our father Jacob. You know, so they have that linkage too. And who gave us this well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Verse 13, Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. 
But whoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up unto everlasting life, unto Zoe. This is salvation. When you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you receive of the water of life, and your life is changed. You have eternal life imparted in you. This is salvation. That water you drink from. Isaiah will say that, come and drink freely without money. Say, so why are you spending your money on that? We cannot quench your thirst. And so on. Okay, so what Jesus was telling her about is the salvation he could give to her. I give you water that will spring up into everlasting life. Zoe, the life of God. Are we clear on that? So this is different from, this is being saved. This is different from what he was saying in, in, in John 7 from verse 37 where we read, on that day, that great day of the, on that last day, that great day of the peace, feast, Jesus stood and cried, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believes in me, as the scriptures have said, from under his belly shall flow rivers. John 4 was water, a well you fetch, you drink. Are you hearing me? Now, he that believes in him, that, that water from the well is already in that person. Are you here? From under the belly of he that believes in Christ shall flow rivers of living water. And Jesus said, the, 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 the scriptures explained that by this, that he was, he was talking of the Holy Spirit, who those that believe in him should receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So that river is about the baptism with the Holy Spirit. What he spoke about in Acts 1, 9. He told those, they have drunk of the water, they received the Holy Spirit. When he said, receive, he breathed on them. Just like God the Father breathed on Adam the day he made him out of clay and breathed into him and he lived. When Jesus breathes into you, you become a new creature. And he may not come physically to do it the way he did to those early, the, the day the church was born. But if you follow what, he wrote, what is written in Romans 10, 9 and 10, the moment you act on that, God imparts his life into you. Get me Romans 9, 10, uh, 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 Romans 10, 9 and 10. Romans chapter 9, chapter 10 rather, 9 and 10. He said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you believe in Jesus, you believe in your heart, Jesus is the son of God, he, God sent him here for me, to die for me, he died, when you believe that and speak him, confess him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus breathes a new life to you. He will, he will not come physically and say, receive the Holy Spirit. But he will impart the same thing he gave to the disciples in John uh, 20 verse 22. In fact, 21 and 22, he says peace. He spoke peace into them. And then he spoke a new life into them. Receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit entered them. They became new creatures. So if you will believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved just like them. Are we agreed? God at that moment will do a work of regeneration in you by the agency of the Holy Spirit, acting on the word, you've acted on the word of the gospel, on the gospel. You've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He gives birth to you a new creature in you. Now, that new creature needs to be empowered to live victoriously. And that's where the baptism with the Holy Spirit comes in. Are you here? Are you here? So, when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, Rivers can flow from inside your spirit, from under your belly. Rivers of living water that will touch others. The baptism with the Holy Spirit enables you to touch others. To serve, to, to do things in the name of the Lord that you can't do on your own. Okay, so we see the fulfillment in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 2, can we get there? He said, wait, you shall receive power. 
Acts 1 8, the next chapter. They waited. They waited. They waited. On the day of Pentecost, corresponding with the Pentecost they used to celebrate, while they were gathered in that upper room, now go to Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. The Holy Spirit was re released and the prophecy of Joel was fulfilled. Are you here? Jesus was killed on the day of the Passover. He was a chosen lamb of God. He was born where sheep should be born or were kept. The lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, only in line with prophecy. And so on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, not two hours to the day of Pentecost, they were with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and they filled all the house where they were sitting. It went around. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and they sat on each one of them. You know, like, like candle flames, you know. They saw things on top of their heads like candle flames on every one of them that were in that room. And they were filled, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Ghost. So this is a different experience from John 2. It's the same people. That day they got saved. Are you here with me? Now, today they got empowered. They got filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. You didn't see them speak in tongues in John 20, verse 22. And they were all filled, look, leave it on verse 4, with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak in other tongues. If you're saved, it's a divine provision of God and blessing of God for you to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And it comes with the enablement to speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit does not speak in tongues. But when you speak, he releases unction to you. It's man that speaks in tongues. Are you here? But when you receive the Holy Spirit, he enables you. He gives you the unction. The Bible says, as the Spirit gave them utterance, they spoke in tongues. The Spirit gave the utterance. Okay? Okay. Um, give me seven minutes. Let me land on this now. So that was the day the church was launched. And the, they began to preach right on that ground. Peter preached. And people heard and began to be saved. Now look at Acts chapter 8. Verses 4 to 6, quickly. Acts chapter 8, verses 4 to 6. From verse 4. Now, what happened was, they persecuted. Now, these disciples, gathering in their thousands, stayed in Jerusalem. And God wanted them to reach out to Samaria, and all the, spread over Judea and Samaria, and then go to the utmost part. They gathered in Jerusalem and were complaining about food and sharing. God allowed persecution to come on the church. And then they were scattered. So Philip ran to Samaria. And when he got there, he began to preach. And many received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They were saved. They received, when you hear they received the word of God, you will see it in Acts 8. We will meet it somewhere. You will see it when Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 and his family received the word of God. You know, in, 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 chapter, in verse, I mean, chapter 11, um, verse 1, when the disciples heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God and so on. Receiving the word of God is you've received the gospel, you've received, you've acted, you've believed in the gospel, you've received, it's like being saved. It's the same. 
Therefore, they, were, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. That's what we don't do. Anywhere you are, preach the word in your office. But before you can preach that word, you have to live that life. Are you hearing me? Some cannot preach because you're not living the life. Is sapping you of your opportunity, one-time opportunity. Even in the groups where you belong outside the church, you can't talk, you can't use it as a platform to speak to them because they know you, and you know they know you. You see how we, we misrepresent Christ. You see how we rob ourselves of glorious opportunities to witness. You can't talk. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Verse 6. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. No, verse 6. Okay, go to verse 12. Verse 12, quickly. But when they believed, but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. That's baptism with, in water by immersion. They were baptized in water. Are you here? They were baptized. Okay, look, verse 13. Or rather, jump to verse 14. Now, when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, how that Samaria had received the word of God. How that, it's the same as saying how, how that Samaria has received salvation. Are you here? They sent unto them Peter and John. When they heard there were not believers in Samaria, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. 16. For as yet, he was not falling upon them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were even better than those in Acts 19. Those ones were baptized by John. And they moved with it. You are baptized in the name of Jesus. Where are you going? Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. It's not only by laying of hands. I've told you of somebody that was walking alone on a bush track and the Holy Spirit filled him. The hunger element is important. This was Samaria. Now we get to Acts chapter 19. Quickly. From verse 1. Acts 19. From verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? There were certain things he noticed. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Since the time you believed? Since you became a believer, have you received the Holy Spirit? And he said unto them, and they said unto him, rather, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto what we are ye baptized then? And they said unto John's baptism. Then Paul, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that's on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. That's one way to do it. Lay hands on people, and they receive the Holy Spirit, and they speak in tongues. It's not the Holy Spirit that we speak and prophesy, but when you, so you release yourself. But even when it's declared, receive the Holy Spirit, you can catch on with it, depending on your hunger level and your desire for him. Release yourself, and you speak in tongues. Are you here? And then other gifts can show up at that moment, like they prophesied there, like as you see. 
Can you say after me? I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Say after me, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he is the Lamb of God that took away my sin. On the cross of Calvary. I believe he died for me. He went to hell in my place. And he rose on the third day. I believe he's ascended and seated at the right hand of God. And as a believer in him, I'm seated with him at the right hand of God. That's my position. So I declare before heaven and earth and before all men, Jesus is my savior and he's my Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So after you're saved, the next thing to go for is the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? God wants that question answered today for somebody. And he wants the believer that is here already spirit-filled to be filled anew. Because the intensity of satanic attack on earth today is increasing. Are you hearing me? We have to raise our spirit level and our prayer level. And the way to raise your even spirit level, water level, is to raise your prayer level. You have to pray it in. You have to pray for it. And God wants to anoint his church afresh to meet the challenges of our time. It would have been an exercise in futility. If when Elisha, everybody awake, Keep awake. Now, it would have been an exercise in futility if when I gave Elisha that lifetime opportunity, ask what you want before I'm taken away from you. It would have been an exercise in futility if he asked him, let the same anointing that is on you rest on me. He had just seen Elijah Divide the Jordan. Are you hearing me? That was powerful enough for anybody to settle for. But it would have been a mess. That level of anointing did not conquer Jezebel. And she was the biggest threat in the land. Every Jezebel spirit that he has set his eyes on me and on Olivet Bible Church and on our families. Today, the judgment of God is upon you. The sword is upon you. I command desolation and destruction to enter your camp and set it on fire. Destroy it in the name of Jesus. For strong is the Lord who judges you. You shall no more reign. I dethrone you from your sin. You said that I sit queen and I no widow. Widowhood and bereavement shall come upon you all in one day. In Jesus' name. Father, cut that evil one off spiritually and physically. No one will terrorize your family anymore. No one will terrorize you anymore. Arise, shine, for your light is come. You have illumination and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That terror is over. Declare with your man, that terror is over. Satan, your terror is over. Say, I call an end to your harassment. Is there a voice here today? Is there a living soul here today? Rise up to your feet and call an end to that harassment. Let me hear your voice taking authority. Rise up. Rise up. Say, enough is enough. Not again. Affliction shall not be a second time. Affliction. Tell Satan it is written. Affliction shall not be a second time. When Satan took James and killed him. When Satan took James and killed him. What did the church, how did the church respond? They raised their prayer level. And so when he took Peter, he could not swallow Peter. Because the church was in prayer. Arise, shine. Your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Lift up your hand and say, 
as a symbol of the authority you carry, even the name of Jesus. Say, Satan, your harassment is over. I rebuke you and your forces, and I resist you in the name of Jesus. That harassment is over. That harassment is over. That distraction is over. That distraction is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. Declare with me, arise. I arise. I shine. For my light has come. My enlightenment has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Christ in me is my hope of glory. I shall not be defeated. I shall not be conquered. I shall not walk in defeat. I am not the victim. I am more than a conqueror. I'm the victor. Say I'm the victor. I'm not forsaken. I'm sought for. I'm sought for. I'm sought for. I'm not forsaken. I am sought for. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. In conclusion, the Holy Spirit is yours for your asking. The Holy Spirit is yours for your asking. My God and my Father, every evil eye that set upon us, every evil eye that has set itself upon us, let the rebels block off that eye in the name of Jesus. And let the wild beast eat it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every hand stretch forth against us in warfare. I command you hands this moment wither and dry up. Die in Jesus name. Evil shall reign no more. We shall possess the gates of our enemies. We shall possess the gates of our enemies. They shall surely come, but not by the clearance of God. God will cause all our enemies that rise up against us to be smitten before us. They shall come against us one way and flee before us seven ways. Father, scatter them in confusion. Scatter them in confusion that have risen against us. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before fire, so melt them, O oh God. Roast those witches. Roast those occultists. Set their covers on fire. Fire ravage their covers. Desolation and destruction enter their camps in the name of Jesus until they leave us alone. Until they leave us alone. Until they leave us alone, every strange woman that is destabilizing a home in this church, I command that strange woman. It's how that she repents now. For our Father, cut that person off. Cut that person off. Cut that person off. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Luke chapter 11 from verse 11 the Holy Spirit is yours for the asking if a son shall ask bread of any of you who is a father your, your son is hungry and asks you for food will he give him a stone or if he asks a fish will he for a fish, instead of a fish, give him a snake. Or if he asks an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If you then be an evil or natural man, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more? Somebody say how much more? Say how much more? Shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him how much more? The eagerness of God. The eagerness of God. There are scriptures that use that language. How much more? 
Where evil abounds, grace does much more abound. Much more, much more. If you can do this for your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit? That's the eagerness to show you the eagerness of God. Now, don't wait till tomorrow. You're receiving the Holy Spirit now. And you're getting a great, a fresh feeling of the Holy Spirit if you're already filled with the Holy Spirit in this service. Can we bow our heads? If you're here in this service and you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life and you want to receive him now, can you raise your hand wherever you are? You want, to, you want me to pray with you? You want to make Jesus the Lord of your life? Can you raise your hand wherever you are? From verse 7, Jesus says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he who seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom his son as bread will give him a stone? Or... If he ask a fish, we give him a serpent. If you then be evil or natural men, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him good things? Luke specified the Holy Spirit. Matthew says good things. The Holy Spirit is good. In, in the Psalms, the Bible says your spirit is good. The Holy Spirit is good. Is the devil that is a bad devil? Are you here? The devil is a bad devil. The devil is a bad devil. He doesn't give anybody any gift that will bless him. He will get you gifts that will lure you out of God's way and isolate you and destroy that person at the at, uh, Eventually, that's his end. That's his terminal plan. You know, there is this thing about expected terminal results, right? ETL. Expected terminal. He, his expected terminal result concerning what he's doing is to destroy that person. He, let me tell you, no matter the gift Satan gives to you, no matter what he lures you into, promising you what he cannot give, he has no agenda outside the threefold agenda. Which Jesus spoke about in John 10 10. The thief, that's Satan, he's a thief. Commit not, but for to steal. Anything he gives you is stolen good. Somebody was telling me of a friend of hers that almost got jailed. A young couple that just got married. He bought money to buy a car. Was it money to buy a car? Only for him to get arrested that it's a stolen car after two years. It's God that saved him. He was able to, to, to bring the police to show them the person that sold it to him in first act here. It's 12 years imprisonment. Somehow, God saw the innocence of his heart. Stop letting Satan give you stolen goods. He's a thief. Tell somebody, stop taking his stolen goods. Tell me, help me preach to somebody. I said, talk to somebody. Say, stop taking stolen goods from, help me, please, extend this message. Stop taking stolen goods from Satan. You can reply and say, I'm innocent, if you're innocent. <laughs> Are you telling me something? <laughs> okay. Now, so that's the plan of the devil. Are you hearing me? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. Stop collecting goods from him. It will get you into trouble. Stolen waters, adultery, all sorts, reveling, drunkenness. They don't belong to you. Okay. One thing. Say, how much more? Ask God one thing between you and him. If you want to get on your knees, get to box. It's between. Settle one thing here. Ask him so and believe while you're praying. As pray, believe. 
There is no deliverance God cannot give you now. Lord, what an awesome service. What an awesome service. We give God all the glory. Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, O oh God, for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for anyone that has been baptized in this service with the, with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, O oh God. What you have done in our life today is permanent in Jesus. Name. Even the prayers we have rendered before you, Father, we shall testify of their answers in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. So let's worship God with our offering. Let's worship God with our offering. This is worship time. Let's thank God for what he's doing in our lives. Let's thank God for the fresh anointing. Let's thank God for the boldness to speak his word, to act along the paths that he's leading us. Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you have done in our lives. We worship you with the substance in our Father, you alone are deserving of our worship. Our bowing is only unto you. Father, receive these offerings as sweet-smelling servants, O oh God. And let the op heavens open, open up unto us, O oh God. That there be a fulfillment of all that you have spoken to us in Jesus' name. Father, take all the glory. Take all the honor. Be adored forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.